All right. In this video, we're going to go over an introduction to fracture mechanics, which will give us an idea of why the demo that we just completed happened the way it did. All right. So a couple, just a starting point to kind of understand uh, what we're talking about. So if you calculate um, the fracture strength uh, for a material, so what it takes to break all the bonds um, in a material, you know, across its cross section. And so if you just do that calculation, you get that the theoretical strength, so this uh, sigma theo here, should be approximately equal to the elastic modulus E divided by 10. So for an example of that, let's look at glass. So glass has an elastic modulus of about 69 gigapascals. So if we divide that by 10 and convert the units here, we get that it should have a theoretical stress, or sorry, theoretical fracture strength of 6,900 megapascals. So this is a really large number. However, if you look at the actual fracture strength of glass, it's more on the order of 50 megapascals. So you can see a huge discrepancy here, right? And so fracture mechanics is going to sort of show us that difference, what accounts for that difference. And in a nutshell here, just to kind of sum it up, uh, flaws. So flaws exist, always exist in materials, and they amplify the applied tensile stress or any type of stress. And so for a bonus, I just kind of put in uh, a video here of a glass rod. So it might be a little dark to see, but basically we have a, a glass rod that takes up most of the viewing area. And this is a high speed image of it in a uh, four point bend, if you remember from uh, the mechanical properties chapter. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it and just kind of show you what happens. So this is the fracture um, of that glass. And so you see that it's very instantaneous and I'll go back again. You see just all of a sudden it breaks. And so that is that you know rapid brittle failure without warning. And you can kind of see it uh, bend and it creates this sort of V uh, point in the middle, uh, but that's very characteristic of the glass bending. So again, it's fracturing at about this 50 megapascal uh, position and not anywhere close to this. And so we're going to kind of see if we can determine why that is. All right. And as an, uh, another added bonus, um, I have some other waste of a high speed camera. And so this is me. Um, doing a similar demo that we did before, actually. This is uh, one of those pretzel rods that's twisted. So you can kind of see that there and you can see my hands. Uh, and so I'm going to perform a bend test on this pretzel rod and show you the same kind of uh, high speed video of that. So here I'll start it and kind of show you what's happening. And again, you can kind of see it uh, initiates from the bottom and kind of breaks up, but it's very rapid. Um, in the way it, it fractures. And so again, that's just a you know added bonus for additional kind of waste of high speed camera resources. All right, so let's kind of talk about the, the factors that are involved here. So when you have a flaw, um, a surface flaw or an interior flaw, the cross-sectional area is decreased, right? And so to kind of illustrate this, I, I put a, a solid material here and so you can envision it under uh, tensile stress, and then you can envision the same kind of exterior diameters, but of highly porous material, right? So there's less material, and so the cross-sectional area is noticeably uh, decreased uh, in these porous materials. And so this is one effect of flaws. And so this will cause, um, if you kind of just go through the stress calculation, if the area decreases, the stress is going to go up right? And so it concentrates the stress. Um, so that's one effect. And this is really important for porous materials compared to solid materials. However, in our materials, you know, I, I say that all materials have flaws. Well, they don't typically have uh, the kind of uh, amount of flaws that you see here, right? Where it's a noticeable decrease in the cross-sectional area. They tend to be rather small, um, and so th this is the same way with the demo. The demo you did with the notches in your sample, uh, those flaws are relatively large, but in real materials, you have flaws and they affect the way that the material breaks, uh, but they don't 
drastically decrease the cross-sectional area. So this is this is important for porous materials, but not necessarily for the run-of-the-mill materials that have flaws. So what's more important for those materials is this idea that if we have a crack or a flaw, so this is an interior crack uh, and this is a surface crack, if you have these um, items, these defects, what happens is the stress gets concentrated at those cracks. And so that amplifies the stress that is exhibited right at that point, or right at this point here. And we can actually uh, quantify that stress, the magnified stress here, by the, uh, so essentially this stress is the stress at the crack tip, so at this point or this point, and then we have the applied stress, which is here, and the, the, the crack tip stress is equal to two times that multiplied by this factor of A and rho T. So A is the, the length of the crack, and then uh, this rho term is the radius, so the radius of curvature uh, for this crack. And so that's what gives us the stress concentration. And so that's the most important factor and contributions that flaws have, not this area. This is only important for very porous materials. For every other material, stress concentration is the important part. So let's look, look at the sort of implications of that equation. So stress is concentrated by larger. The larger the, the crack or flaw, the more concentrated the stress is, and also the sharper the crack is. Um, and so uh, something like this is very brittle, uh, but if it's ductile, it can actually kind of get uh, deformed here and we have more of a curvature. And so stress is concentrated at these very sharp cracks. And so if I just go back very briefly to the previous demo, right? That was basically the difference between two and three. This is a very sharp crack. This is um, a less sharp crack, even though that they have the same um, A or depth to them. This is a much sharper crack. And so concentration, uh, the stress is concentrated much more on this, which is why the force to break it is less, right? So that's that basically comes out of this equation here. So basically the radius is the kind of the the point we're talking about here. So basically any sharp corners that we have are going to really concentrate stress and should be avoided. And so you want to avoid these sharp cracks uh, if you want to avoid failure. Um, but like I said, in ductile materials, we can have plastic deformation. And so basically, if we have a, a crack like this with a very sharp point, uh, it can actually become deformed. And then this can kind of blunt um, the, uh, the onset of that crack. So the idea here is that for brittle materials, flaws are extremely important. For ductile materials, there tends to be deformation that occurs at the crack tip which kind of offsets some of that stress concentration. And so it becomes less important. It the, lowers the stress concentration. So brittle materials, these cracks and flaws are very important. Ductile, uh, not quite as much, but it's still uh, an issue.